Good evening, everyone. This is Prophetess Angela Richardson. I'm going to do a teaching on today that God has given me. Um, before I get started, I'm going to invite a couple of people to the to the live. So just give me a few minutes um, so I can invite a couple people to the live. And um, what we're going to talk about today is trusting, trusting God. You know, can you trust God? I mean, a lot of people say they trust him, but then when it really comes down to it, they don't really trust him, trust him as they say we do. We, we don't trust him as we say we do because we're, we're so busy trying to uh, work things out in our own strength. And, you know, uh, when we when mess around and working, trying to work things out in my own strength, we usually make, we usually make a mess. You know what I'm saying? So if we if we can just be patient and trust God to move on our behalf, then God will work it out for our good. You know, because a lot of times the way we want it. Hey, um, prophet is GG. How you doing? So many times we want it to be fast, quick in a hurry. You know, we like the microwave stuff and everything God do for us. is not a big, it's not going to be a microwave. It's going to be a process. So we have to, um, Hey, Prophet Terry, how you doing? So it's a process that what God does for us. So, you know, we got to, you know, trust God that he knows exactly what he's doing, which he does. You know, a lot of times we think we know, but a lot of times we don't, we don't know as, as, as much as God does, you know, because God is able to see things that we can't see, you know, um, he, even now in prophecy, we prophesy in part, we know in part, but God knows everything. So, you know, we have to allow God to do, to be God in our lives and do what he wants to do in our life. So I, I do have two people on, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and then I'm going to go ahead on into the lesson. Hopefully I won't be on here a long time on today, but we, we, we shall see. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's again that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we pray right now for everybody that comes on the live, everybody that comes on the replay, Lord, that they will open up their heart and receive the word of God that is coming forth on today right now in jesus name lord we we welcome your presence on this live like never before right now in jesus name lord let me decrease so you may increase right now in jesus name and lord we just give you the glory give you the honor and give me the praise in all things in jesus name we pray amen so like i said the teaching that god has me today is trusting in a faithful god trusting in a faithful god because we know god is faithful he ain't going nowhere he ain't i mean He's going to always be there for us. Um, many times we may walk away. Uh, may, many times we may get out of alignment. But, you know, he has a way of wooing us back into his presence and getting us back on the right track. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first scripture I'm going to use today is Psalms 31 and 14. I'm coming from the Amplified Bible. But it says, says but as for me, I trust comfortably in you. And your greatness, O Lord, I said, you are my God. And so this is David talking. You know, David went through a whole lot of stuff. And so this is David praying and talking to God. So he prayed that God would save him regardless of the trials that David was going through. He still trusted in God to bring him through it. So he just like David, you know, um, the stuff that he went through and a lot of stuff that David went through, you know, David was, um, you know, he, he done something and then it was consequences for the things that he done. So, you know, a lot of things that we're doing, we, 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 we allow ourselves to, you know, to override the Holy spirit, you know, and then we go and get in certain issues in our lives and then know, and then when we get in certain issues, then we cry out to God, which he's there always for us. And of course he'll help us out. Sometimes he'll help us out of that situation and sometimes he'll, he'll be there just with us uh, to strengthen us as we go through that situation. So David was going through some situations. If you know the story about David, you know he went through a lot of situations and some of it was his own making, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but we, we you know, you know, we're still going to believe God that, he, you know, when we pray and we cry out to God that he's going to hear our prayers and he's going to come and see about us. He's going to come rescue us. So right here it says, even though some of the trials that David was going through were because of the choices that he had made in his life, God still was able to see him through it and he was able to learn a lesson from it. So, you know, a lot of things that we're going through is, is to learn a lesson, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's good if we learn it the first time or maybe the first two times, you know, 
and not keep having to go through this, you know, go around the same mountain year after year. We're still going around the same mountain. And, and the reason we're doing that is because we're not learning the lesson. So it's, if it's a lesson that needs to be learned, if you keep going around the same cycle over and over and over again, then you need to ask God, uh, ask God, what is, what God, what do I need to learn? Is there a lesson in this? Why I'm still, still going around the same mountain? Is, is there a lesson in this? And when you ask him and he'll tell you yes, and he'll tell you what you need to do, then you need to do that because you don't need to keep going around these same mountains over and over again. And then not only that, what I'm hearing is, um, doing the same thing, but expecting different results. Mm -mm. That ain't gonna happen if you're still doing the same thing, you know, and you, you expecting different results this year, you know, you said you did the same thing last year and you got a certain response last year. So this, this year, now you're doing the same thing, but you expect something different to happen. Mm -mm. You're going to get the same results you got last time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you just got to change your mind, change your, your, um, the path that you're going, you know, if you're going the wrong direction, you need to change your mind, change the path that you're going. If you want different uh, results, then you got to do something different, right? I mean, cause you, as long as you're doing the same thing, you're going to get those same results. So you got definitely got to be doing something different. If you want different results, he said, the next scripture I'm going to use is Psalm 28 and seven coming from the amplified Bible as well. He said, Lord is my strength and my impenetrable imp imp shield. My heart trusts with unbravering confidence in him and I'm helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and with song, I shall thank him and praise him. So, you know, he's, talk he's talking here, here in this scripture as well. He said, the, the Lord is his strength and his, he's got an imp impenetrable shield. Now that word is stumpy up today, but impenetrable shield. And you know, I looked up impenetrable cause that word stood, stood out to me and it means, um, it is impossible to pass through. So, you know, God has a shield up. Ain't nothing else. Can't nothing get through this shield that God has uh, surrounded with. Can't nothing get through it. You know what I'm saying? Without his permission, you know, can't nothing get through it without his permission. He said, my heart trusts with unwavering confidence, confidence in him. And so I, I was unwavering came to me, you know, I want to look this word up too. So unwavering definition in Miriam Webster dictionary is continuing, continuing in a strong and steady way. So he said, um, his, 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 uh, trust in God was unwavering that he knew that even though he was going through whatever he was going through, that God had an imprint, tradable shield around him and his trust was in the Lord. So he know God was going to take care of him, you know, and just like we need, we need to know that as well, you know, because what, what God was doing in here in this scripture with David, he's, he's going to, he does the same thing with us. But we got to put our total trust in the Lord, you know, and not trust in the things that, you know, the world may be doing the things of the world. We can't be trusting in the things of the world because we're in the world, but not of the world. So we are, we are peculiar people. We are unique uh, people in God. So we're not so supposed to be conforming to the world. You know, we're not supposed to be being like a, a chameleon. You know how the chameleon is, you know, it's a, um, like a lizard. You know, and when he go out there on something green, he green. And so he, he go, go out there on something brown. He changed color. He, he brown now. You know, you, you see what I'm saying. So a chameleon, chameleon change colors with whatever atmosphere he's in, you know, or whatever he's sitting, he's laying, you know, he's standing on. He changed colors to that, you know, so he can blend in. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get out that so he can blend in, but we ain't supposed to be blending in. We supposed to be different. The world should be able to see something in us. You know, we saying we trust God and then, but whenever something happened in our life, we falling all the pieces, you know, that letting them, I mean, the people looking at us, they say, Oh, they said they trust God, they trust in God, but they just falling to pieces when this is, this is certain different things happening in their lives, you know, but we should have our faith. We should have, um, have that bulldog faith to believe. That, you know, that we can trust God, that he's going to work things out for our good. So all we got to do is pray and tell God what's going on with us and release it to him. Why are you still worried about things that you have no control over? We don't have control over people. 
You know what I'm saying? All we can do is pray for people. We don't have no control. Uh, we can't make nobody do nothing. All we got to do, all thing we have to do is pray for people. God is the one that changed hearts. God is the one that changed minds. God is the one, is he's the one that's going to do that. So ain't, a, ain't no use of us worrying and stressing, can't sleep at night, can't eat, you know, over, you know, stuff we don't have no control over. Give it to God. He is God. Let God be God. You know, we ain't God. You know what I'm saying? So let God be God. Let God get, get, give God his, his position back. Give that stuff, every, everybody that you dealing with, give it back to God. Say, God. You know, I'm just going to pray for this person. I know I don't have no control over them, but you do. You're, you're able to change hearts. You're able to give them a Damascus moment. You know, you remember the Damascus moment when uh, Saul was, was, was on his way to the, uh, Damascus to um, uh, persecute the Christians? He thought he was doing God a favor. Really? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that was their religion back then today. The but you know what I'm saying? He thought he was doing God a favor. That that's what he's supposed to have been doing was persecuting the Christians. So he's on his way to Damascus on his horse. And next thing you know, a light blinded him, and it was Jesus. And then Jesus told him, Why why is thou persecuting me? And he said, Who is thee? He said, this is Jesus, you know what I'm saying? And then he was knocked down off that horse and blinded. He was blind spiritually, so now he blind in the natural, you know what I'm saying? But you know, he had to have a Damascus moment. And just like he did it, you know, a lot of people that we've been praying for, they got to have one too. Because until they have that uh, Damascus moment, they're not going to change no matter how much we, I mean, no matter how much we talk to them, how much we, you know, we on the phone going back and forth with them, you know, arguing and fussing with them. No, we ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give them to God. We ain't going to argue and fuss. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give them to God and, and allow God to do what he need to do in their life. life. Hey, brother LC, how you doing? So we're going to allow God to do what he want to do in not their life. It's not our responsibility um to try to make people do right you know what i'm saying our only thing only power that we have in that because in that capacity is just to pray for people we don't have no control over what people do you know what i'm saying only person you have control over is what you do you know what i'm saying as long as your life lining up with the word of god you know it says um work out your own uh, salvation with fear and tri trembling so he said, work out your own. You know what I'm saying? And so give them back to God. God got them, trust me. He got them. He got a way of reaching them that there's no way you can reach them the way God can reach you. So, you know, let him, let him do what he's going to do in daylight. You know what I'm saying? And said, so right here, said, the Lord is our strength to support us, to carry us all through all, all of our suffering. So anything that we may be going through in our life, we, we as the people of God, we don't have to, we don't have to suffer by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because God is with us. His word has already declared that he will never leave us, never forsake us, that he will be with us to the end of the world. And he means exactly what he says. Even if we walk off from him, guess what? He's still there. You know, he's going to be right there when you come back, when you come to your senses, just like the prodigal son did and come back to him. He said, we need to, we need to truly believe God at his word. And that is, and that if he, we need to truly believe God at his word, because if he has said it, it is going to manifest and it's going to come to pass. I don't care if he said it to a prophetess or a prophet, whoever he said it, evangelist, pastor, teacher, uh, you know, uh, all the fivefold or whoever, even a minister, if he has spoken it through any of, any of the people of God and he has spoken it onto you and you know without a shadow of doubt it came from the heart of God, guess what? It's going to come to pass, but it's going to come to pass in God's timing. So what we have to do is ask God to give us some more patience. You know, patience, that's one of the nine fruit of the spirit that we need patience. Because we don't want nothing before it's our time to have it. Because if we try to go ahead of God and get something, it's going to be a mess. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm, saying? I, I'm a witness. It's going to be a mess. 
when you're trying to go ahead and die, it's going to be a mess. So, you know, your best bet is to wait on God, allow God to do what he need to do and whoever he need to do it in and let him, while you waiting on God to fix him, let him fix you or whatever that he needs to do in you. So, you know, whenever that time comes, you know, you both of you hold, he hold, you hold and y'all get together. Hey, now y'all is one and now y'all could be a powerful, that dynamic team in the Lord. But you don't want him. You don't want just somebody. You know what I'm saying? You don't want um. If you're whole, you don't want nobody broken. And if they're whole, they don't want nobody broken. You know what I'm saying? Because if if you try to get together before uh, God's timing, it you know it, y'all gonna end up destroying each other. So you know that's why God wants you to wait. Wait on Him. No matter how I mean, don't matter how old you is. The enemy always want to bring to you where you're certain age. You certain up in age and, you know, especially those ones, you know, that maybe don't have no kids. Well, you maybe you, you certain up in a certain age and you know you need to have get married and have kids by this certain age. If you don't do that, then, you know, it da 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 But, I mean, we're talking about God, him. That, that Sarah had a baby up in her almost 100 years old, up in her 90s. Come on now. This is who we dealing with. This is who we dealing with right here. We dealing with a, a, a God. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with God. God is able to do anything but fail. You know what I'm saying? He can. Able, he was able to speak to Sarah's womb and it came alive. He was able to speak to uh, Elizabeth's womb and they came alive. So guess what? God is God. You know what I'm saying? So allow God to be God in your life. It said he will carry you through when things are not always going on in your life the way you think they should. So a lot of things we think should be going on in our life, it ain't always good for us. I'm just saying, you know, we don't always know what's good for us. You know, a lot of things we think is good for us may not be what's really good for us. Because, I mean, that might, that's cause, that might be what we want, but don't necessarily mean that is what God wants for us. It said right here, it said, of these scriptures states that he is covering you with a shield and his shield can't be compromised or infiltrated because it's a solid. So anything God does is excellent. God don't have no holes in his shield. You know what I'm saying? His shield is solid. So he's there to protect us, keep us covered from any attacks. You know, the enemy, you know, the um, enemy try, may try us, attack us all kind of ways. You know what I'm saying? But the word of God said no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. He didn't say it wouldn't form, but he said it wouldn't prosper. So it wouldn't, he, the enemy can't do what he really want to do to you because guess what? Because his hands is tied. He can only do what God say, what God allows him to do and what God tell him he can do. You, you remember when he went to, when, when the guy about Job? Job, he told, he told Satan that he can take everything he had. You know, he can, he can even take his body, but he couldn't take his life. So just like he done, uh, the enemy done had a talk with, with God about you too. You know what I'm saying? And so God already know that you're going to stand just like he knew Joe was going to stand. You know what I'm saying? So he, he allows him to do certain things to you, but it's not to, uh, to break you. It's to make you, you know what I'm saying? Because, Hey, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm trying to, I'm trying to let me stay with my, you know, with my, my notes, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But you know, it's not when he guys allow stuff to happen in our life. It's not the breakers, you know, it's, you know, it's not the breakers, but it's to help us. He says, so when we know that God is protecting us, even when we can't trace him, or even when it seems like he's silent, he's still protecting you and me. So even when we can't trace him and seem like we can't hear from him, you know, which he's talking. A lot of times we, we ain't paying attention, but he's talking. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, and you would feel like, well, well, God, he don't hear my prayer. He hears your prayer. He's here. He hear everything you say. He, every word you utter. He hears that. You know what I'm saying? And he's, a, he's listening. And he said, but he's still protected us. Don't you know he's protected us from things that we ain't even seen ourselves? You know what I'm saying? And th some things we've seen, you know, many of us in many uh, near accidents, I put it like that. And if you know it wasn't nobody but God, because I was riding down the road the other day, and this car, uh, it was a stop sign there. This car, I, like, it was a yield sign. <laughs> I was like, what? And I was driving, you know, I was driving slow, and I was riding, praying in tongues. 
and this this car come to the stop sign and hit kept going. I said that they must think that's a yield sign. That's a stop sign. But I was, you know, I was bike further enough because I was riding. I wasn't riding fast. You know, I was riding pretty slow and I was praying in tongues and I was going on I'm going on where I was going. And I was like, man, I said, look at that. I said, I said, well, I thank God. I said, God, if I'd have been just a little bit further up the road and they they run that stop sign, they could have hit me. You know what I'm saying? But I just thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so a lot of times, you know, with me when I'm riding. And I'll hear him talking. He said, he say, pray. I said, okay. So I start praying in tongues. And then when I get up on up the road, I said, oh, that's why I'm praying in tongues. Right there. Right there. For what's going on up the road. You know what I'm saying? So he he's protecting us. So, you know, whenever you get that inkling or you ever get uh, an unction from the Holy Spirit, go ahead and do what he's asking you to do. Because you don't never know what is up the road. But guess what God does? He know exactly what is, what is up the road, and he's going to make sure that you don't get in that accident. He's going to delay you, in, you know, any kind of way he can to make sure that you don't get up in that accident. He's protecting you. He's got that shield around you that the enemy may try all he can to try to hurt and harm you, but he can't do it because God has you covered. He has you protected. So that, you know, that's why he said, you are his child and he will make sure that you will come out victorious in every situation that you're facing in your life. So you, you already know we're victorious in Christ. Now we ain't walking to victory. We already walking from victory. We sitting at the right hand of the father just up there where Jesus at. You know what I'm saying? So you're victorious already. For the enemy's job is to make you doubt God's word. You know, and it make you doubt that what God has spoken over your life is coming to pass. So that's just his job. So guess what? He's good at his job. You know what I'm saying? He going to do his job regardless. You know what I'm saying? So, but you got to know within yourself that what God has spoken out of his mouth, it is true. God can't tell a lie if he tried. He can't because he's not that kind of person. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, you know, he's a spirit, but you know what I'm saying? But he's, he's, he cannot tell a lie. He can only tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? And so you already know uh, if you've been studying God's word and you've been praying and you've been fasting and you've been worshiping and God is speaking to you. You already know that more nine times out of ten that when stuff is coming against you, you know that's the enemy is coming against you. He's trying to get you to stop. Go back in that cave and slam the door of the cave. That's what he's trying to get you to do. But you know within yourself that you cannot do that because you are already victorious. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are already victorious. Just stuff hadn't manifest. A lot of stuff hadn't manifested in your life yet, but you are definitely victorious already. And said right here, but we must we have but we have to fully trust him to do it and wait on him how long no no matter how long it's going to take for him to do what he's going to do in your life we got to learn how to wait we got to be patient that's another one of the fruit of the spirit being patient can you be patient just a little while longer because god is perfecting everything that's concerned you not only you or whoever whatever you're praying for god is perfecting that situation but can you wait on god i mean truly wait on god without mumbling and complaining and whining can you do that i'm just asking can you do that so the enemy only can only do what god allows in your life the thing that god allows in your life was not sent to break you but it was sent to make you. So I'm going to ask you some questions in a few minutes. Say, so if you never went through nothing and you had everything that you needed at your disposal, would you be close to God as you are now? Now, this is a personal question. I'm asking you a personal question. If you never went through anything, if you never struggled about anything and everything was in front of you, you ain't had to pray for nothing, you ain't had to fast for nothing, would your life in God be strong as it is now? And it's is that, a, you know, is, would it be strong as, as you are now? Would you be strong in God as you are now? If you never went through anything, would you be that strong? No, you, you wouldn't. So that's why God allows it to build us. 
Because we need to be, we need a relationship with, with God. We need that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. We need to stay his face. You know what I'm saying? We need his strength. You know, we need his joy. If you need joy, you know, uh, get in his presence and get in, go into the holies of holies and you the joy of the Lord will, will engulf you. And next thing you know, you'll be in there laughing and giggling. Everybody looking at what she laughing at. What she giggling at? Cause you, you know, now you have the joy of the Lord. So stuff that used to bother you don't even bother you no more like that. He said, if you never, uh, would you pray like you pray now? If you didn't never, if you ever, never did go anything, would you pray like you pray now? If you never went through anything, it, that is, that's my next question. Would you pray like you pray now? If you never went in, went through anything? No, we wouldn't pray right. We wouldn't even pray. We, we be prayerless. Most of us would be prayerless. You know, just being honest, you know, being transparent. Most of us be prayerless, but you know, God allows stuff to happen in our lives. So, Hey, we know we got to get in God's presence. Lord, I don't know if I don't, you don't get, you don't help me. I don't, I don't, be, I don't believe I'm going to be able to make this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so God allows things to happen in our life. You know, for me, for instance, you know, um, God had gave me a dream back, you know, it was like back in 2008, uh, he had gave me a dream. And I dreamed this like two times. And the dream was like I saw two tornadoes. They were small, you know, they was like small tornadoes. They was right beside each other and they were just twirling, coming down the road, twirling. They wasn't destroying nothing. They wasn't tearing up nothing, but they were just going down the road, twirling. I was like, Lord, I said, why are you giving me this dream? And then when my mama got sick, and then uh, she passed one day. Then my aunt got sick. The next day had a stroke in the brain and died the next day. And then I realized what those two tornadoes was. I knew that was what there was. Two, you know, two deaths right behind each other, like a day apart. Uh, not, not actually a day, you know, a couple of hours, maybe 12 hours apart. A death, you know, my mom and then my aunt. And the strange thing about it now, my mama, my aunt lived on the corner. And then my uh, mama lived right beside her. They lived right beside each other. And, you know, and when I realized and, and began to ask the Lord about it, I said, oh, that's what that, that dream was. And why I had that dream twice of those two tornadoes right beside each other that's twirling, coming down the road. They wasn't destroying nothing, but they were just coming down the road. That was what that was, you know. So he was warning me that something was coming. But you know, I you know, I didn't you know, I didn't know it know uh, about more about dreams like I know now. But you know, but but when he revealed it to me, I was like, oh, that what that was, you know, that that that, that was two deaths. That was gonna be two deaths, like even tw about twelve hours apart. You know, that was close to me. You know, cause you know, I hung out with them two all the time. You know what I'm saying? And so he was just showing me what was to come. You know what I'm saying? And so. You know, so when I, when I realized that's what that dream mean, I was like, wow, God, okay. So you were showing me, you know, at, but at that time I didn't know, like I know now about those dreams, you know, or what they was, what they was represent, but it, I'm just letting you know that, you know, and then when, uh, I began to pray, you know, when I was going through those deaths, I was like, Lord, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, man, my mama died yesterday and then my aunt today, God, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to make it. And you know what he did? And I got before him and I lay before him and on, you know, I lay on my, my, uh, living room floor before him and I began to cry out to him. And guess what? When I got up from there, I had strength. I had strength. I had strength to go through what I had to go through. You know what I'm saying? Because I, there's no way I could avoid it. Cause he was staring me up in my face. You know what I'm saying? There's no way I could avoid it. So he gave me strength to go through what I had to go through. So, you know, so, um, you know, things happen in our life, you know, and, you know, you know, I, you know, and sometimes there's nothing we can do to avoid it. But what we do while we're going through it, it what matters, you know what I'm saying? He said, um, the next question is, would you fast like you do now? If you never went through anything? No, you wouldn't. I mean, let's, let's be real with each other now. You know, just be real with yourself. We wouldn't. We wouldn't fast like we fast now. No, we wouldn't. 
to, to, to be honest, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do it because we wouldn't have no reason to because everything would be laid out before us in our hands. We had we everything we wouldn't have to, uh, you know what I'm saying? We wouldn't even have to be struggling for anything. So you know, so that's the reason God allows us to go through things so to strengthen us. You know, so strengthen us. He said, would you be reading and studying the word of God like you do now if you never went through anything? No, just be real. No, we wouldn't. You know, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm being transparent. I, you know, I probably wouldn't, you know, but be, by going through stuff, you know, and then when I, uh, you know, after we had the funeral for both of them, you know, we had a double funeral for both of them. And then um, the scripture, somebody, I was talking to one that day at the store, that store, and they said, you know, when my mom died, God gave me this scripture, John 14, let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. So I got that scripture, I mean, I got that chapter, and I began to read it, I read it at morning time, I read it at night, you know what I'm saying, and that spirit began to, that, that word began to build up in me, you know what I'm saying, and I was able to make it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, even when uh, her birthdays came, Mother's Day came, her birthday May 14, Mother's Day May May the 8, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I'm I'm in my word, I'm laying out before the Lord. I'm yeah, I need I need some more strength, God. And guess what? He gave me more strength, you know what I'm saying? So you know, you know, we don't have to go through nothing alone, you know, unless we just choose to, because God is there for us. Not only that, he's placed other people, bef you know, that could help us pray us through, you know, reach out to someone, you know, and they will help pray you through, you know what I'm saying? You said, and last question is, would you be as strong as you are now in God if you never went through anything? So, you know, we wouldn't, you know, just being real. So, you know, we're going to, we, but we're going to trust God because we know that, you know, he says, we're said in this word that he would not put more on us than we're able to bear. So he knows what we're capable of bearing. He already knows because he made us. He knew us before we was formed in our mother's womb. He already knew us. So he knows what you're capable of. He knows what you can bear. He knows what you, and you know, many, many times when we need help, you know, we want to suffer in silence, but all we got to do is open our mouth and ask God for that help. And guess what? When we ask God for that help, he's going to make sure we get that help because he's a pre he's an ever present help in a time of trouble. You know what I'm saying? So we, we got to ask for what we need. He said, answer to all these questions would be a transparent is no, because you wouldn't need to pray fast worship because everything would be handed to you on a silver platter. But life is not like that. I'm just, I'm just being real. Life is not like that. We go through things, and we always go through things. As long as we're living on this earth, we're gonna always go through things. You know what I'm saying? But you know, at certain certain point in our life, you know, stuff should be building us. It should be building us. It should be building us. So you would, you would be as weak as rainwater. I'm just saying. This is what I was hearing. So you would be weak as rainwater because the only way to build your faith muscles and all the other things that I mentioned above is to go through opposition and get it on your face before the Lord, praying, fasting, reading and studying the word of God and crying out before God so that intimate relationship can be built with him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he wants that relationship with us. He wants that one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. You know, I can't, you know, I can pray for you. But, you know, uh, if God wants you to come to him himself, I can't go to, I mean, you know, I can, I can pray for you. But if God wants you, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you, I can't use my relationship to go to God for you. You know what I'm saying? But, you, but, you, but I can pray for you. You know what I'm saying? So God wants that intimate relationship with you. So when he's calling out to you, he's calling you to come to a more deeper place in him, to come into a, a more um, higher place in him. He's drawing you to him. And, you know, and like I said, he allows certain things to happen in our life to draw him to us and not push us away from him. So we got to know when we're going through, instead of going backwards the other way, we're going to go forward and get closer to him instead. You know, that is the purpose of it, to get closer to God, to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, to be in an intimate relationship with God. It says right here, it said, um, walking in faith, walking, walking in faith walk is not easy. 
but we don't have to walk it alone. We have Jesus with us and we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us to lead us and guide us in all truth. So truth, you know, God is going to guide us, you know what I'm saying? But we got to trust him, you know, trust him with everything that concerns you. So we don't have, have, we do not have a choice but to trust in a sovereign Lord who is the answer to everything that we'll go through on this earth. Trust him to know what is best for you. Many times we think that we know what is best for ourselves, but we don't always see the big picture. But God does. He sees the big picture. He sees what is going to happen in a couple of years if, you, if, if true healing and true deliverance don't take place. He already sees that. He said right here, he said, he sees what is up the road ahead of you. And sometimes he allows you to go on a detour. So, so he already seeing up the road ahead of you. For example, I see, I'm seeing a road, you know, how, you know, you own, you driving down the road and there's a really curvy road. Now you can only see till you get to that curb, but you can't see it. You can't see going around that curb, but God is already around that curb. He can see already what's around that curb and what you're going to run into. He already sees that, you know what I'm saying? So he already knows what's ahead of you. And many times he take you on a detour, you know, stuff that you may have wanted right now. He's like, no, you ain't quite ready for it. You know, no, we, we going to just, uh, we're going to just go do something else for right now. You're not quite ready for that yet. You know, and, and sometimes he conditioned you to be able to go through it. Sometimes he's there with you. He said, well, come on, we're going to go through it. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to help you through it. You know what I'm saying? But whatever he does, he does it because he loves us and he wants the best for all of us. Say God is blocking you from experience a lot of things. He's a blocking all of us from experience a lot of things in our lives that could derail us to make us walk off from God. He is derailing those things. So we do not walk off and leave him. He said we should be able to trust God's judgment on any situation. Just because something may be good for someone else doesn't always mean it's the right thing for you. Let me say that again. Just because something may be good for someone else doesn't mean it is the right thing for you. So, you know, if God is blocking that area from you going there and, you know, then he don't want you to go there. And I'm going to give you a, a testimony on that. You know, when me and my husband first was wanting a house, we was going to another ministry over in Douglas, Georgia, and we wanted to move over there. And every time we go try to, you know, first we're going to try to rent. We went over there trying to rent. And the rent was off the chain. I was like, wow, guy. And then we went over there. We're going to try to buy. And the credit wasn't quite where it's supposed to be. And so I said, well, God just keep closing this door. So he, apparently he don't want us there. That ain't where he want us to be. So when we try to, when you try to move out of turn, you end up being over there and being, I really went over there and being miserable because we ended up over, over, over on another side of, you know, another side, you know, um, on another side of Alma, you know, uh, uh, and cause we're going to the church in Vidalia now. So that'd have been almost a two hour ride to go to, to our church that we are now. So when we went back home, you know, we was upset, you know, I, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie about it. We was upset. We weren't happy about the situation. You know what I'm saying, but we was upset, but we went on ahead and let, let God be God because we know he knew better than us what was best for us. And so we stayed where we were uh, a couple more years. And now then God moved us in our, in our home. You know, he, now credit scores elevated, everything, able to get in our own home. You know what I'm saying? So when you wait on God, he, you're going to get the best that's, that is for you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if we just settled over there, we would not, we would not have been happy. You know what I'm saying? Not only that. We might have had a mortgage that probably would be knocking our heads off by now. You know, we probably had to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? But when we wait on God and allow God to position us and allow God to open that door for us, then it's going to be easy peasy. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's important that we be patient. You know, we may be upset with God, you know, and you know, sometimes... Uh, we need moving people on around us and that, that person no longer hang around us. And, you know, 
they they you know um when he start moving from people around us a lot of time we're praying and asking god say god if there's anybody around me don't mean me no good move them from around me and move people around me that mean me some good and then so when people start dropping off from you you'll start feeling some type of way but you've been praying and asking god to move those people that didn't mean you no good so when god start moving those people that, that mean you no good you know you should remember oh yeah i pray that prayer remember i i pray that and i told god to put people around me that meant me some good that's gonna help push me to the next level in him you know put those people around me and so when he start moving those people that don't mean you no good from around you and he start putting people that that's gonna push you to your next level in god don't get upset because they leaving because, I mean, that's what God is doing. He going to move people from around you that may make you derail your, that may, de, may, that may cause you to derail your destiny. He would not allow them to hang around you. He would not allow them to stay. And you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we don't, we don't get it. A lot of times we've been friends with people for years and years and years. And, you know, you may have known them when you was in high school or grade school. And you know, and uh, you you now you get saved, and now they ain't they ain't want us to get saved. They want to stay, you know. They want to do their thing, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? But you wanna you wanna be all that God wanna want you to be. You wanna go forward in God. And so when God starts moving people from around you, you know, just realize that this is God's doing. You know what I'm saying? Because He has purpose for your life. And you know, if anybody is around you. That you know that is not not going to not ready to go where God is taking you. You can't take everybody with you. You know you know um, it's like dead weight. You know what I'm saying? You know like uh, you're you're moving in in the you know um, just for example, you're being all that you want to be in God. You hunger for God. You don't surrender all your life to God, and you wanna you wanna tell God you I I want to do I want to do everything you tell me to do, and then you'll hang around people that's dead weight. But now you're trying to drag that dead weight where God is trying to take you and they can't go. You know, I'm, I'm just saying they can't go with you. So, you know, so um, a lot of times we get upset with God because he's moving people. But remember, we don't pray that prayer. And so God is listening to what we're saying. And so he's moving people from around us that don't mean us so good. And he's putting people around us that mean us some good. So we got to allow God to be God because we know God knows everything. He knows every conversation. He done heard conversations that you ain't heard when you ain't been around. You know what I'm saying? He done heard those conversations. So, you know, when he began to move people, you know, I know it may, they be, you may have known him for years. They may be your ace boom all the way back from kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? But if he began to move them out of your life, they allow him to move them. Quit trying to drag people dead weight with you. You know what I'm saying? It's trying to, it's hard to try to drag dead weight because you can only get so far de dragging dead weight. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I hear. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you know, if you want to be all you can be in God, you going to sometimes you just got to let folk go. You know, you know, and you're going to love them. You're going to still pray for them. But you sometimes you may have to let them go. If God is moving them, then if he's moving them, then he's going to replace them with somebody else that's wanting to go the same way you go. That surrender to God, that loves God, has some soul out to God. You know, you know what I'm saying? He's going to put those people around you. Because you remember you just prayed that you want to take the people that don't mean you no good for around you and put the people that, that that's going the same way you're going. That's covenant friends. That's, you know, that's going to push you to your next level in him. So when, when he began to do that, don't get, don't get all up. Don't have walk around him with your mouth all balled up. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that is what God is doing. He, he will move people from around you. If it feel, if he feel like that as they're going to try to derail your destiny, he will move them. And you know, you need to be okay with that. You know what I'm saying? You need to be okay with that. He said right here, it says, so unless you have, I'm saying, so we should be able to trust God's judgment on any such situation. Just because something may be good for you doesn't mean it's good it's good or the right thing for you. So unless you um, have full assurance that God is telling you to do something, 
you need to pass on it for right now. So if you don't like, for example, if somebody else is doing something and you say, oh, that, that might be a good thing for me. And you may have tried it. You try it out and it just it's not a good fit. It don't seem like it's fitting good with you. Then that ain't for you. You know, because when God tell you to do something, it's going to fit. It's going to make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's going to fit. You know, so if it's not a good fit, then that not, that may not be for you. So you need to, you, after you done prayed and God said no, then you, that ain't, that don't, 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 don't try to make it fit now. When it ain't, when it ain't, that ain't for you now. You don't be trying to make something fit when it ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? Said trust God with your whole life. So God want us to trust him when I, want us to trust him when our whole life. Not just certain areas of life, okay? So, so we can, I can trust him with my, my, my life, my husband's life, my marriage, um, my daughter, my granddaughter. But when it comes to my money, God, I don't, know about, I don't know if I can trust you with my money. Now, he, he needs the control of everything, you know. You know, you already said, for God I live, for God I die. So that means everything concerning you, right? So that means you're going to trust him with everything concerning you. It says right here, so, um, so you know, you know, if you don't sold out to God, then you don't sell out all you, all you, everybody that's connected to you. Sell out everybody connected to you to God. Give them back to God. It ain't your job. You know, we as mothers, we try to work things out in our own strength. It's not our job. You know, it's God's job. You know, let him have his job back. You know, he can do it better than I can. Ain't no use of me struggling. Uh, I'm hearing this. Ain't no use of me struggling going to borrow money. Um, maybe for a finance company to try to do something for one of my my children, and um, next thing you know, um, um, I borrowed five hundred dollars, and next thing you know, I'm got to pay back fifteen hundred dollars. So that's a thousand dollars extra than what I borrowed. And next thing you know, and they done told me, "Oh, mama, I'm gonna help you pay that money back." Like, okay, man, you get that money and you stuck. No, I'm just saying, you uh, you stuck paying it. You know what I'm saying? So allow God to be God. If you continue to try to be God in their lives, they ain't going to never do nothing on their own. You know what I'm saying? It comes a time. Take your, take it, take the, untie the apron strings, to untie them, and let God. You know, they got to have their own experience with God. Let them have their own experience with God, just like you did. You know, it's time, you know, sometimes you, you know, you can pray for them. Don't get me wrong. I ain't saying not pray for them. You're going to say to pray for them, you know, but then it comes a time. That, you know, if it's going to um, hinder what God has to do in your life, then, you know, you got to do what God is telling you to do. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm hearing. I'm just saying what I'm hearing. It says right here, it said, he knows what is best for all of us. He will give us many of the things that we have been praying for when he knows that we're ready to do it or embark on it. So when he knows for a fight that you're ready, one thing with us, we can't fool God. You know, sometimes we can't even fool people. I'm just saying, but we definitely can't fool God because He know where we exactly where we are. He know everywhere, every one of us, everybody on this line. He know exactly where we are in Him. You know what I'm saying? He know exactly where we are, and He knows exactly where He wanna get us to. So you know, you know, we can't fool Him. You know what I'm saying? So we can't fool Him. So we got we we just allow Him to do what He wanna do. You know, and when He knows that you're ready. And you know, it just I'm just for example, if you want to get married or whatever, when he knows for a fright that you're ready, and he knows a fight for the man that he has placed uh, and has picked out for you as ready, guess what? He will put y'all together. Can't nothing, nothing, hell, hell can't stop what God finna go put together. You hear me? Hell can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? So, but he has to know that you have, you know, grown in a certain area, that he, the man has grown in a certain area. So he's going to perfect things concerning you and the person. So when y'all get together, y'all going to be a dynamic team. Y'all going to have a dynamic man ministry because marriage is not just, you know, just because I'm attracted to you, you look good or you cute or whatever, or, you know, or that I love you, which is, you know, you're supposed to love them. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's a ministry. Matter, marriage is a ministry. And many of us, in in um that are married we are we we uh we are walking in uh ministry you know anyway you know you know me and my husband he's in ministry i'm in ministry so we'll we'll we're going to be a dynamic team because guess what we're walking on one accord 
So when we're walking on one accord, ain't nobody fight. I ain't jealous of nothing he doing. He ain't jealous of nothing I'm doing. And we take our gifts and put them together. Oh, let, you know, the, the Shekinah glory going to show up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't need, um, you know, you know, we don't need, um, I'm going to try to say this in the right way. Lord, I mean, we don't need, we need spouses that are so truly sold out to God. You know, uh, you know, a lot of us, a lot of time us women, we try to go get these, you, these men that we can fix up. Ain't no fix it up. We ain't God. God is the only one that can fix somebody up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They got to already love God. They already got to know God. They already got to be sold out to God. They got to already be, have a relationship with God. They already got to have all that. For they, they should be able to have already that. For they even you allow them to even holler at you. I'm just saying. You need to be asking them. Don't care how cute it is. What kind of suit they got on. Uh, what kind of shoes they got on. What kind of car they drive. What kind of house they live in. That ain't even the, that ain't even the issue. Your issue is if they say. If they full of the Holy Ghost. If they totally surrender to God. That, is your, that should be your major question. You know what I'm saying. Let that be your major question. Because hey. If you get in these mere marriages, I've been there, been in, in these marriages, thinking you could change these men. Guess what? These men going to end up changing you. I'm just saying. <laughs> so it best if he already saved, delivered, and set free of everything that's, that's, that's bothering him. You already saved, delivered, and set free of everything that's bothering you. When y'all get together, watch God do what he going to do in y'all marriage. And not only in y'all marriage, but in y'all ministry. But I mean, we, we, we definitely got to allow God to do it. I mean, because I, when I didn't do it, I had a mess. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. A true mess. You hear me? Two, two different um, uh, spirits fighting. Spirit of God in me. And then uh, um, the enemy in him. And it's always clash, Always clashing. Always clashing. You know what I'm saying? That, that ain't a good feeling. I don't, I don't want nobody to experience what I experience. So that's why I let you know right now. Don't even, don't even go there. Don't, don't, uh-uh. I don't care if you know them since y'all was in junior high. Don't even go there. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't even do it. Said he would not give us uh, things before we are ready. Wear it. Wear it. He would not give us things before we are ready. No matter how much we beg and plead, he ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because if it has the potential to destroy us, he would not allow it. He's not going to allow you to be destroyed just for sake. You got This is this is for the sake you say you got a you got a husband, you got a wife, or you know what I'm saying. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do. He's not going to allow what he's built up in you to be destroyed. And just just so you say you got a husband or a wife, you know he's not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? But you can override him any day. You know what I'm saying? You know, many times we override the Holy Spirit. We hear him talking, but we we oh, we gonna do what we want. We be mad. And we gonna do what we want to do. Oh, we grown. We think we grown. I'm grown. They don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. I do what I want to do. And guess what? Nine, five. I give you five five months later. Like, oh Lord, what was I thinking? Exactly. God was trying to warn you. So you better be leading, listening, heeding to those warning. Cause I didn't lead, I didn't heed to the warning. And Lord, look at him. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't want nobody to go through what I went through. I did it twice, two marriages. They lean into my own understanding. I wouldn't do it, you know, but I don't have to do it now because God has gave me a man of God. But what I'm saying is I'm trying to get you from going there. You know what I'm saying? Don't go there. Don't you can't change that man. Oh, uh, you know, you can't change him. God can change him though, but you can't. You know what I'm saying? You could pray, but God is gonna want to gonna change him. Said God has a fruit and a hope with expected in for you, but it will will have to be in his timing in your life. So because if we get out of the timing of God, we have the potential of making a mess and destroying ourselves in the process. So you know, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you know what I'm saying? I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. I'm saying it was just that serious. I'm just saying it was just that serious. Y'all hear me? It was just that serious. I almost had a nervous breakdown. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with, you know, it, the enemy. You know, we can't change. Like I said, we can't change people. People got to want to change for themselves. You know what I'm saying? I was dealing with the enemy. 
I almost had him there, Brad. I, I began to pray. I said, Lord, please, if you get me out of this, you ain't got to worry about me no more. And guess what? It, when I all came to a head, whew, I left there in my car with my clothes in my car. I was saying, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. And that's what I was saying. I was like, whew. Oh, God, I, don't, I, I know it's you that got me out of this relationship. And guess what? I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to make nobody be who, they, who all they can be in God. You know what I'm saying? They got to want to be there. They got to want to do what God, they, they got to want to know God. They got to want to give their life to Christ. They got to want to do all that. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, um, so they got to have their own relationship with God. They can't go off of my relationship with God. They got to have their own. You know, everybody got to have their own relationship. They can't go off. Even my daughter can't go off my relationship. Or my grandbaby can't go off my relationship. Even my husband can't go off my relationship. My, you know, uh, my brothers can't go off my relationship. My auntie and aunties can't go off my relationship. They got to have their own relationship with Christ. They got to have their own. So right here said, allow God to be God in your life. And allow him to make the needed decisions in your life without interference. So, let him do what he want to do in you and whatever the situation that you've been praying for without you interfering. Quit, quit, quit messing up when God is trying to, to, um, to take you up to the next level. I mean, you know, um, quit um, trying to do it in your own strength. Like I said, you can't make people do nothing. You can only pray for them. You can't, you can, you know, you can, whenever God give you a chance to speak a word, speak the word, sow the seed. God said, if you sow the seed, he'll uh, send somebody else a water and he'll give the increase. But, you know, it's, it's going to take God, you know. It's going to take God to be able to do things in all our lives. It's going to take God to do things in my life. It's going to take God to do anything in all those names I just called. It's going to take God to do it. I, it, ain't, it ain't my job. Ain't no use of me sitting up all night worrying and, you know, and all stressed out, you know, um, blood pressure going up. And, you know, it's, it's uh, mm -mm. God don't hear me for high blood pressure. Guess what? I ain't getting the bite for nobody. You hear me? I ain't getting the bite for nobody. So he said, um, just surrender your life to God and trust him at his word. And he will make all your crooked places straight. So trust God. You know, God was, was dealing with me about this message because he had gave it to me yesterday. And I had to go on a, um, a, a visit. I was visiting somewhere. And I went there yesterday, and I was supposed to have wrote it when I uh, did the, wrote it when I came home, but I was tired. And so when I got up this morning, I was still tired. I said, "God, I'm tired. I don't feel, you know, I don't feel like it." And I said, "Well, why don't I, I already had one written for something else?" And I said, "Why don't I go get that?" He said, "Nope." He, he said, "No, I want you to do what I told you to do." I said, "Okay." So let me go ahead and do, be obedient, and do what he's telling me to do because it matters, you know, because. When he give you a word, it's not only for you, but it's for other people. Whoever may be on this live or maybe whoever come on the replay that needs to know that they can trust God with anything that's going on with their lives. You know, with any, with any relationship, they can trust God with it. And God is able to fix anybody. I don't care who it is. The hardest, hardest person in the world, God is able to fix that person. But, I mean, you know, we just have to allow God to be God, you know. You know, we like I said, we can't make people do what we want them to do. But but God, you know, he can work on their hearts and he can change their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. God is able to want to change the heart. Said, But it will take trusting God, trusting him with everything. So can you trust God with everything? Now, I don't want to just hear you say you can, but I want to know for a fact. Can you trust God with everything when stuff is coming up against you? Can you trust, really trust God with everything and keep your hand at it? Can you do it and not put other people before him? God don't want nobody put before him. He wants to be first in our lives. So, you know, uh, if, if there's a ministry he has told you to do, do your ministry until, and you know, do your ministry, do what God told you to do. And then he'll make all this other stuff happen. Um, what that, uh, do, uh, if you take care of God's business, he'll definitely take care of your business. So as, as you're taking care of God's business, now you don't got your focus off of whatever else is going on. And now you don't put your focus back on God. And as you take care of God's business, he'll let that other stuff, he'll work that other stuff out. And the next thing you know, that whoever it is, 
uh, whatever you was praying for, it'll start manifesting right before your eyes. Why? Because you took your focus, you 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 took a focus off that situation, which was a distraction that keep you from doing what God has told you to do. But when you take your face, your intention off of that distraction and put it back on God and do what God has told you to do, all that stuff you've been praying for, it's going to start manifesting. But you got to get your attention back on the one, the only one that can help you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. He's the only one that can help us. So get your attention back on the one that can help you. Get your attention off of what's going over there on the left side, on the right side, behind you, in front of you. Get your mind back on Jesus. Get your a focus back on, the, on God and do what he's telling you to do. And when you do that, his word said, if you be willing and obedient and you will eat the good of the land. So God is looking for obedience. When you can be obedient, he don't mind blessing you. He don't mind opening the doors for you. He don't mind working things out for you when you can be obedient to what he's telling you to do. So our number one priority is to be obedient to God and do what he's telling you to do and trust him to be able to work everything out in our lives. So whatever you need in life, trust him with it instead of putting trust in your own selves of other people. So if he's telling you to wait on something, then wait because he's trying to keep you protected. His, that's his job. He's, he's going to protect us regardless of we, like what we agree with it or not. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to agree with what God is doing. He ain't going to ask our opinion on it. You, do, you already know he's not going to ask our opinion on anything that he does for us. He's not going to ask your opinion on it. So you just trust God for what he's going to do in your life. You know, trust him. I mean, if anybody you can trust, you can definitely trust God. You know what I'm saying? The maid, the, the creator of everything. Don't you know you can trust him? You know, have, get your, you know, if you don't have a relationship with him, get a relationship with him. If you got a relationship, you know, continue to work on uh, getting closer to God. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to matter. It's going to matter. You know, because, you know, God loves us so much. You know what I'm saying? So, but we got to trust him. You know, I mean, really trust him. Not say we trust him and then first thing jump off in our lives. We just go into pieces instead of really trusting him. So, you know, if you need to do this, is what I always do. I, you know, I love decorations. I'm a, I'm a stickler for decorations. You find you some scriptures to whatever de you're dealing with in your life. Find you some scriptures. Google it. And find you some scriptures. Make you some declarations. Uh, and start decreeing and crying every day over your life, every day, every night. How many times you need to do it to get your, you know, get yourself back in, back your, back in, um, perfect order. That's what I'm here to get yourself back in perfect order. Do what, do what, whatever God is telling you to do, because you know He wants, to, He He's gonna bless you, you know. But it's gonna, whatever He's gonna do is in your own timing. He's not gonna give you anything before your time, because He don't want it to destroy you. He don't want it to uh, make you walk off and leave God. You know, a lot of times, you know, when we get in, um, uh, for example, I'm hearing this now. You know, when somebody, you, you, we need a new vehicle and we pray and ask God, so God, I need a new vehicle because it doesn't keep breaking down. So God give us a nice, new, shiny new vehicle. Um, maybe it's uh, of the, what, 2023s or 2022s. And so we get it and, you know, payments is nice and, you know, we ain't struggling to strain to pay for it. And so and on Sunday morning. Yeah, I'm going there. So on Sunday morning, instead of us being in church, we out there washing our car. Now, we don't had all the week to wash our car. But on Sunday morning, when we should be in, in church, giving God the praise and thanking God for what he has done in our life, for what he has given us, we out there on Sunday morning washing our car. And guess what? We get to wash and we go in the house and sit down and start watching TV. We don't think nothing else about uh, God, but we don't pray and we don't ask God to do all this for us. And then when God do it, now we're going to turn our back on God. That should be, you know what I'm saying? That really should be. Unless something happened and you can't be there, that's different. You know, somebody's sick or whatever, you working or whatever. I understand that you can't be there, but just to be loafing around, come on now. You know, you God didn't bless you. So, you know, give God your time. He just, he wants your time. Not only in church, not only on, on Bible study time, but your personal time. Give him some, a couple of, you know, if you ain't got a couple of hours, you got a lot of things going on. Give him uh, 15 minutes, you know, 
if you got to go in the bathroom and like act like you in the bathroom doing something go in there and spend some time with him you know to get off by yourself you know what i'm saying but give him some time because you know um he's the only one that's going to be able to help us he's the only one that's going to bring us through whatever we're going through now you know or whatever we may come go through in the future he's the only one and, and can't nobody do it like he can so you know so that is all i'm gonna say today but, you know, God just wanted me to let y'all know to trust him. I mean, really trust him. When you go, when you get ready to have surgery, you know, you don't pray the prayer of faith. You don't have other intercessors to pray the prayer of faith. Go in there knowing that God's going to gonna work it out. You're not in there alone. He has these as ministering angels standing beside your bedside. You're not in there alone. If you got to have it, go in there and have your surgery and come out with your testimony. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm just, I'm just using that for example to let you know God is everywhere. You know, you wherever you sitting at now, you in your car watching this video, you in your home watching this video, you wherever you at watching this video, guess what? God is there. He's there. He's everywhere at one time. Can't I don't know no other God can do that. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, we have all these other religions, but they God is just as dead as a donail. They can't do nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? But we have served a living and risen Savior who is able to do his silly above all that we can ask or think. So, you know, um, you know, just just trust God. I mean, put all your trust in God. It's not in a job. You know, it's good to have a job. God, a job is just a source that we can use. I uh, get go there and work and have have money to, to give our tithes and offering and to pay our bills. You know what I'm saying? But God is, a, is our ultimate source. Because without God, you know, we couldn't even get up in the morning time. A lot of times they say, well, you know, the alarm clock woke me up. No, it wasn't no alarm clock. It went off. But it was God to say, Angela, hey, it's time to get up. You know what I'm saying? Because many people were still laying there with that alarm clock going off and they couldn't hear it. But you was able to hear it. So, you know, it's all God. It ain't us. It's all God. Everything that we got, God gave it to us. You know, because the more he can trust you, the more he would give you. So, you know, you know, just continue to get closer to him, continue to surrender everything to him. All your family members, everybody surrender them. You know, we pray for them and I'm going to give them back to God. You know, it's not my responsibility to change people. It's God's responsibility to change people. So allow God to do what he want to do. You know, get out of the way, get out of the way and let God do it. And he can't. When he do it, it's going to be done the right way. You can better believe that. It's going to be done the right way. So anyway, um, that's all I'm going to say on today. And I thank you for those that came on the live on today. But I'm just, you know, I'm just real being a real reiterating. Oh, yeah, I got that word out, y'all. Uh, that trust God. I mean, really trust him. With, no matter what's going on in your life, trust him with it. Tell him what's going on. He already knows, but he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. That one-on-one -on -one relationship. Tell him exactly what's going on. And he's going to fix it. He's definitely going to fix it. I, I have many more testimonies I can tell you. But I ain't, I'm, I'm going to get off of here. But God can fix it. I know you got some testimonies you can say too. And you just go back, let, go, go back and remember of where God has already brought you from. And that will let you know what he's capable of. And he's, he's, he, de he definitely is not going to leave you now. He's not. He already said he wasn't going nowhere. So if he, whatever you're going through now, you can best believe that that's going to be worked out too. So just keep your faith and keep your trust in God. The, uh, he's a sovereign God who created everything. And he knows, you know, he can knows when to move on your behalf, on, on everybody's behalf. He knows exactly when to move on your behalf. Just be patient with God. And because he knows exactly what he's doing. All right. I love y'all. I pray that y'all will have a blessed rest of your day. God bless you.